Hello, you lot. Don't you just love the smell of gas in the morning? Got my fresh cup of coffee here, and it's a Sunday morning, so usually, uh, well, I would have been out this morning, usually driving around looking for fly tip in and anything else interesting I can find out there. But because, um, because we've got our new baby, I ain't leaving the indoors yet. I'm going back to work tomorrow, but I ain't going out in the morning yet. Not until he's a bit older, you know. So, gonna try and tackle a few last bearing jobs uh, here today but that power cut yesterday didn't last very long how's it going you lot it's a bit dark isn't it out here near? it's not even that it's not even night time we've had a, quite a lot of rain today um, and it's caused a power cut so emergency communication time it is I've been waiting for this day been waiting for this day I love it I know you can use landlines because there's 50 volts come down the landline and all that, but sometimes that may not be working either. Right, so I've got my generator outside ready and waiting. I've got my battery here. I've just gone and taken off the car. Ready, ready, rock and roll. Got my CB, CB here. All right, plugged into the antenna. Now, look at that. Hey? ready and waiting i can now still talk to anyone who's got a cb providing that they haven't got a power cut <laughs> providing that they've got means of power but emergency communication eh emergency communication eh hello anyone out there on the one nine? Oh, i heard a bit of a breath take it you ain't got a power cut Oh, I heard a breath anyway. Got a, bit of a, what? a power cut. That you out there, Keith? Hello, Ben. How you doing? Exceptional, mate. Exceptional. I'm, I'm a bit excited. Go on, then. What have you done? Nothing, mate. The area's got a power cut. So I've just had the chance to deploy my emergency communication. Oh, lovely. Your battery, yeah? Yep. I've gone outside, taken the battery off the car, hooked up a right, hooked it up to the right, hooked the radio up to it, and here we go, mate. I'm talking to you with no electric. Oh, lovely. I didn't really get to deploy my emergency rations <laughs> and things like that. I was hoping I'd get to deploy the emergency rations, but I didn't. But it does mean that I chatted on the radio for quite a while using the car battery, so I've got to go and charge that up now. Now this could be a disaster plugging this in I might have to go it might trip the electrics again um, the last time I used this old charger it was charging all right and then all of a sudden it kept tripping out the old RCD box so I'm just gonna have it dangling and plug it in and see what happened oh yeah the bloody switch weren't even on and it tripped it all out they say wrong with that then didn't they I think that's blown well that's a shame I really, really like this old charger. It's, it's probably my favourite old charger. I wonder if I can take it apart and have a look to see what's blown up inside. Thing is, I don't know enough about these chargers to be able to find out what's wrong with it. I might know somebody who can, perhaps. Maybe. I'll have to see, but I've got a funny feeling he ain't going to want to do it. Alright. Alright then. <clears throat> I have got, I've, I've got a big charger, a new one, but before I do that, let's see if we can get this other charger to work, over here. Pretty gutted that the other one broke, that, that, um, that grey one, but I've got this one here, this is an old one as well, from somewhere in the 90s, it can charge 6 volt and 12 volt batteries, I think I've, I've sort of shown you all before these, I haven't used this one properly yet. So we've got the positive plug uh, clip on there. So I need to go and nick, nick a clip um, from the other one that's just broken. And I can put that on the end there. You might have to solder it on. Well, that one's just on by a little clip there. Look, I have to solder it on, and then we can go and see if we can get that to charge up. Right, oh you lot. Wonder if I can get this off. Here we go. 
Hmm, I thought it smelled of burning then, but I was just thinking, yeah, I don't think you plugged in for half a second. That's weird. It's more, maybe it's like gas. Oh, the gas down there. Anyway, there's that. I can get rid of that now. Proper am gutted about that charge of blowing up there. I think I, it was too much for it because when I used it last, I was charging up that battery from completely dead. It was just, it was nothing left, no life left in it whatsoever. And I think it was too much for it being an old charger. It charged it up and then towards the end of the charge, it tripped out the electrics and I turned it back on and it kept tripping it and I was like, oh dear. Big shame. So, you lot know me, I like to use the old stuff. I have got a new charger, a big new charger. Big, 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 big charger. But I like to use this old stuff if I can, so. Well, that one works. Let's go and get the battery and see if it's actually going to put out any charge. I haven't actually tested this one. I don't know whether it even puts out a charge. I know it turns on, because I knew it did before. But I don't know if it actually puts out a charge, so let's find out. Here's our battery. Let's stick a meter on it. I know it was getting low because the old the old CB yesterday on the radio when I was talking, it was uh, dimming, you know, the, the bulb in the, in the meter light and all that was dimming towards the end. So I know it was definitely getting quite low. DC volts. I'll put it on 25 because we're looking for 12 volt. What we got? Yes, uh, not. No, we can't see it, can you? Mm, yeah. Mm. Have you? There we go. You know what? I don't think that that charge rate indicator, there as they call it, that meter there ain't working, I don't think. No, it's working, is it? If it is even putting out a charge. I don't know whether it is or if it isn't, you know. If I put that I put the meter on that as it was charging and it didn't change, but I'll, I'll leave it on and see what happens. If the battery starts to get warm then and this starts to get hot, then chances are it probably is sticking out a charge. I put, like I said, I put that on there. I could just put that straight on the uh, crocodile clipper things and see if there's any voltage coming out of it, but that'll be too easy. So we're gonna wait until it's charged. Or we'll give it a little while and see if the battery makes a difference. So I'm going to go and do a few other things and I'll come back. So every now and again, you lot, I'll get a message either on Twitter or Instagram or something because they're the only social media. I do get them on YouTube every now and again, but not very often. Asking for help. You know, I've got this and it won't run. Or I've got this little motor, this streamer won't run. A motorbike is playing up, whatever. And I always lend a hand for free. Just my advice and say this is what I would do, I think this is the problem, whatever. But I got a message the other day, and uh, I should have saved the pictures actually, but it was from a person, uh, perhaps someone down the road, word got out, um, because some people, you know, I drive around all the time, people, people so, the word, so the word got out that um, I fix things, vacuum cleaners, I fix vacuum cleaners, you know, the washing machine here and there, not very often. And all and stuff to sell it on. So somehow the word got out, and uh, I got a message on Instagram um, from this woman. I don't know how old she was. I've probably I don't know. She, she was all right with the typing, so she couldn't have been that old. Anyway, she said I've got a problem with my washing machine, and I heard that you're a repair man. I said I'm not a repair man. I said I just repair stuff, anything I can find. I repair it, no matter what it is. I'll repair it. For a bit of fun but i'll lend you a hand for free you know i'm not going to come around and fix it for you because i'm not i don't believe i'm capable of that you know charging for that but what's the trouble and i lend a hand the best i can do and she said oh well my washing machine's not washing the best as, it, as well as it used to and the washing doesn't really smell all that good when it comes out it smells a bit musty so <laughs> instantly i thought i bet she closes the bloody door after she used it I bet she closes the door and don't leave it open because you've got to leave the door open and a little detergent drawer you've got to leave it open for air to flow around otherwise you just get mold in it man mold 
and a lot of people put too much softener or whatever you want to call it and too much detergent in yeah you only need a little dab of each anyway so i said all right she said i've got some pictures no, oh, well I said, all right, do you leave the door open or close? She says, I'll close it. So I said, all right. And that confirmed it. So I said, can you send me a picture of, of the, um, the seal around the front? So she said, oh, I've got some pictures actually. I took them to send to another person to come out and fix it. I said, all right. She sent me these pictures, and but she sent them in a way that, I don't know how you do it you said, myself, I've never managed to do it, but you can send pictures on Instagram in a private message and they disappear after about half a second or something. You know, you can't get them back up. That's how she sent them. So I had a quick look. I'll have to see if I can find a generic photo just to give you an idea of what it looked like because the, the seal was black, right? And inside was black and the drum was black and the, the door was black. And I was just like, my God. <laughs> I said, the trouble is there, it mould. Right, I said that that washing machine's had it. That needs to be taken apart and cleaned, either that or get a new one. Yeah, my friend. Yeah. And she said, "Oh, so is there anything you can do?" I said, "Yeah. What you can do is take the seal out, or at least clean it with it in there. Yeah. Loads of um, just use anything you can get to clean it. Big brush, scrub it around. You know, oh, because it was that bad." And that's the trouble these days, you see. A lot of people, when they leave the door closed, especially if you've got a fitted washing machine with a, with a door on it, you know, and they use too much of these perfumed, um, you know, like, um, um, fresheners, fabric fresheners, you know, Lenore and all that. And, uh, yeah, so I didn't, I, I offered advice. I said, give it a good old clean now. Go and get some washing machine cleaner, get some descaler, put it on the 95 degree wash, three or four of them, yeah, and just keep doing it. And cleaning it out and then eventually it will start to work properly again but you're never going to get that's that is ridiculous i said i said you need to leave that door open after you've used it all the time don't leave it open for an hour and close it again just leave it open all the time and then use it get it washing out and then leave it open so hopefully that's what she'll do but there you go you know some people you just can't tell can you i think this is putting out some sort of charge because that's getting nice and warm i've got a um uh, let's have a look 33, 35, 36, 39, 40, yeah, it's getting nice and warm, see? There is temperature coming out of it. The temperature outdoors today and all that, oh, it's 20 degrees today, so 46, look, it's getting warm there. So it is putting out some heat. The battery's not that hot, though. But we don't really want the battery getting too hot. So, yeah. I think it is putting out some sort of a charge. That's definitely not working. But as long as it's charging up my battery, that's all that matters. So, yeah, I don't really want to go and use that one because that's, that's new, you know. I've got that for emergencies. So in here I've got like a, a train set. Oh, falling over. Now I've got a various... It needs a bit of repairing. This is the uh, power unit. Or whatever you want to call it. It's quite a nice one. I've got all the tracking now. It needs a bit of work. Mm. See, some of it's going to be usable, some of it ain't going to be very usable. But, probably in the next video, no promises, but probably in the next video we'll get all this out and um, nail it all to a board and try and get it working. Because what I really want to do is get like a proper, like a steam one. You know, you get the steam ones, they're just like this, aren't they? But like a steam, like a steam locomotive. And they just, instead of these ones being electric, they just chug around under their steam. They have like a little boiler on, don't they? Um, I want to try and get one of those. I'm going to have to try and get one second hand, obviously, because they're expensive. But that's what I want to do anyway. I've always wanted one of them, so I thought I'd get the old train set out and try and get that going again. And get a little steam train for it. We've been experimenting with a wire. It goes from there all the way over. Around there. goes along there. Around there, along there, and stops there. I've got a post holding that up. That's a 20 meter long piece of wire, um, halfway on 40 meters. I'm experimenting with it, it's only been up a couple of days. 
you know, I haven't yet made any contacts. The good thing about a wire is it doesn't have to be as high as a, a vertical antenna has to be. So it will work quite comfortably down there. I, it tunes and everything, but I haven't yet managed to make any contacts. I've heard some American stations and a few other stations, but I haven't been able to get back to them. But, you know, what radio is like, especially 40 metres, you know, you need to persevere. But I'm experimenting with that, so, you know, I'll let you lot know how, it's, how it works out with it. I'd like to have it in a straight line, obviously, really, but space doesn't permit in this <laughs> in my uh, in my QGH, as they say. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Hopefully, we'll get the old train out in the next episode. I'm looking forward to that. So, um, I'll catch you on the next one, there, dudes. Take care, wouldn't you?